All right. So rainbow remind God of His covenant with you. Anything before He do for you, He remember my covenant is to bless them, to take care of them, to watch over them, to protect them. Everything He's going to do for us, yes, He's a Father, He loves us, and He also remember, I also make covenant that is benefiting to them. You see, God is so good, you know, surround Himself with rainbow. When He looks sight, it's also rainbow. When He looks right, it's also rainbow. When He looks forward, it's also rainbow. When He looks backwards, it's also rainbow. When you come to the throne, when you come to the throne, you don't have to be afraid. You know why? Because you will see rainbow. His covenant with you that He will not punish you. He will not destroy you. Just like Genesis chapter 9, rainbow remind Him not to destroy. Right? Not to destroy. Right? So for us, we have a better covenant than the covenant that He gave to Noah. We are in a better covenant than all the covenant. Alright? So, any covenant is good, ours is better. The new covenant, covenant of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ paid for it by His blood, paid for this covenant. There's a payment must be made for this covenant, for all the promises to be yes and amen to us, for God the Holy Spirit to be able to bless us. The Lord Jesus, His blood, His life is the payment. You understand? So, this is exciting. Amen? So, rainbow, covenant, and green. Genesis chapter 9. And the visions show to my friend. You see, there are so many confirmations. You know that we are preaching the rhema word of God. The rhema word of God. Rhema means the word for now for you to hear, to learn. Something that God wants you to learn now. Amen? Hallelujah. Let us jump a bit because of time so that we jump to verse 5. So what is this rainbow? What is this emerald? Verse 5. And out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Seven. Seven lamps. Seven spirits of God. What is this rainbow? What is this rainbow? Do you know what is this rainbow? Let me expound to you. Let me expound to you. This rainbow, all right, let us read the verse again, verse 5, that part. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. The word before, the word before, is actually can be translated as in the presence. In the presence. When it's translated in the present, it makes sense now. Everything started to make sense. You know why? In the presence of the throne, meaning around the throne. You understand? Let us see it for ourselves, burning before the word G1799, the Greek number to the Greek meaning of the word. One, in the presence of. In the presence of, meaning around the throne, is the seven lamps, which is the seven spirit of God. Meaning, it's another expression meaning around the throne. Now it makes sense, right? Because the Bible, two verse down from verse 3, it tells you seven lamps, seven spirit, seven lamps, seven light, seven light. Lamps give out lights. And rainbow color have seven color, seven color rainbows, seven lamps. Seven spirit. Now it makes sense, right? Do you know what is the rainbow? The rainbow means the Holy Spirit. Means the Holy Spirit. And out of this rainbow, you see green color. Green color. And this green color, meaning is also the color of the Holy Spirit. 
the main color of the Holy Spirit. Green. What does green mean? Means life. Green life. Right? Green life. And let the Bible explain itself also in the same book, Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Revelation 11, verse 11. Then it start to especially talk about the Holy Spirit in this area. The Holy Spirit is known for many areas, but then the Bible in the same book, many times will give you the hint about the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and and half, the Spirit of what? Spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet. Spirit of life. A few times in the book of Revelation, it mentioned the Holy Spirit. Okay, it mentioned the Holy Spirit clearly. A few times it mentioned the Holy Spirit clearly. There are times that it mentioned the Holy Spirit in typological form. Typological form. These are the clear mention. And this time, they act in spirit of life. Spirit of life. Because green spoke of life. Green spoke of life. And two weeks ago, and last week, we talked about 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, right? Verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, just now we read, right? Who also have made us able minister of the New Testament, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit, what? Giveth life, life. In the new covenant, especially, he gave you life, life abundantly, so that you don't experience death. You experience life. Life means also health, because life to your body means you live on. Your body don't die. Your body has resurrection power. Romans 8 verse 11. Romans 8 onwards talk about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Life. He gives you life, eternal life, that you live forever. Also life to your body, to your new body. Of course, we will have a new body, but now he can give life to our mortal body to keep us alive and healthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Because this is good news for you and me. Amen. Let us go back to Revelations. So, rainbow actually means the Holy Spirit. And what does rainbow also mean just now we understand? Covenant. When you put the revelation joined together, rainbow means covenant. And rainbow actually means Holy Spirit. Means what? Covenant of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why I say the new covenant is known as the covenant of the Holy Spirit. You have an agreement with Him comes with promises, blessings, goodness towards you. Focus on the correct covenant. Focus on the correct covenant and you will start to experience life. And in this covenant, in this new covenant, you must focus on Jesus and His righteousness and you must focus on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And all the things about the Holy Spirit, the covenant that you have with Him, the blessings that He will have with Him, all the supply He's going to supply you. Recently, I just shared with some people, someone just broke through from struggles, from certain bad habits. You see, focus on the Holy Spirit, they broke through. Amen. Get ready. Your breakthrough is coming. Now you learn more and more. You start to understand clearer and clearer that y- how to break through is to focus on our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus' righteousness, not your righteousness, not the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of Jesus, His blood, by faith, believe in Him, and also the Holy Spirit. Focus on the goodness of the Holy Spirit, the characteristic of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Bible mentioned the fruit of the Holy Spirit? It did not mention the fruit of the Father and the Son. Actually, they are the same, but they purposely mention the fruit of the Spirit. Why not the fruit of the Father? Why not the fruit of the Son? Because they want you to focus on the characteristic of the Holy Spirit, His fruits, and His gift, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, in the Old Testament, before God created the heavens and the earth, God the Father and Son observed the Holy Spirit. They look at the Holy Spirit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. When the Holy Spirit hover or move upon the face of the earth, then God spoke. God did not sp speak before the Holy Spirit moved. They saw Holy Spirit moving already, then they speak. If the Godhead, the God Almighty, Father and Son, observed the Holy Spirit, take the cue from the Holy Spirit, then they move, how much more must we? We cannot neglect the Holy Spirit, but once you start to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, observe the Holy Spirit, and more and more get to know the Holy Spirit, you see your life generally experience breakthrough. Amen. The more you fellowship with Him, speak in tongue, the more of His help come to your life. The more you connect with Him, the more help because he is also known as the helper, right? The meaning parakletos means helper. Also means helper. The more you fellowship with the helper, the more you receive his help. You start to break through. You start to live correctly. Miracle signs and wonders. Amen. The Holy Spirit. And let me share with you again and again, the Holy Spirit is already with you if you are a believer. You don't have to go to a place to look for the Holy Spirit. Yes, you go there, the Holy Spirit is there. Because the Holy Spirit is always with you. Wherever you go, He goes. Not just because He is in certain place, but because He's there with you always. When you go there, when you go to a place to pray, yes, He's there because He's always with you. When you're at home, He's also with you. You understand? So He's always with you. You can fellowship with Him wherever you are. Of course, sometimes people need a quiet place. We understand that's why they go to a certain place. But the revelation that the Bible wants us to know is that the Holy Spirit is in us, with us, forever. Abide with us forever. Amen. That's why Jesus can confidently say that because through His blood, the Holy Spirit abides with us forever. Through His righteousness, the Holy Spirit abides with us forever. Amen. You must bring in these two equations, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Then you see your life start to experience exponential breakthrough. You understand? See, it first His kingdom and His righteousness, two components. I explained to you, you before in my previous message, the righteous one is talking about Jesus, is in Jesus. The kingdom of God is talking about is in the Holy Spirit. That's why you must put in these two equations. I mean, these two persons, these two precious persons, then things add unto you, come to you, increase to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to just show you a bit more. The rainbow is the covenant, means the covenant of the Holy Spirit. You see, the rainbow in the New Testament came out twice only. This time, it explained to you what is rainbow. Rainbow, seven color, seven spirit, seven lamps. In the midst, around the throne, in the presence of the throne, is the Holy Spirit. That's why the new covenant is the covenant of the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to preach this first, like I said, because this one needs to expound. I wanted to preach some more 
clear, easy for you to understand. But I felt Holy Spirit wants me to preach on this. Confirmation after confirmation. I thought I'm going to hold it for a few weeks later. Or a few months later. But Holy Spirit is eager to let you know this message. He's excited until he confirmed upon confirm upon confirm. Do you remember I told you I told you to take note of the word cloud? Because in Genesis chapter 9, the Bible says the rainbow will be in the cloud, right? When you see the cloud, the rainbow will be in the cloud, right? Just as I show you in Genesis chapter 9. Verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud. What does cloud mean in the Bible? What does cloud mean in the Bible? God let Israel, when they were in the desert, God let Israel by day, during the day by cloud, right? A pillar of cloud. And at night, by a pillar of fire, right? Right? So what does cloud mean? Cloud means the Holy Spirit. So what does the Bible say? I do set my bow, my rainbow in the cloud. Rainbow in the cloud, in the Holy Spirit. Cloud is either means the Holy Spirit or cloud means the Holy Spirit is inside the cloud. Now, the cloud is the Holy Spirit is in us. Also, you see, let, let me show the verses. Let me show the verses. You see, in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians, let me show you more evidence to prove it correctly. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Do you know there are many people can tell you many things? Oh, this one means this, this one means that. Then you ask them, prove it. They say they don't know. They just heard from some preacher. They just think it's this way. But you ask them, prove it. How do I know cloud means Holy Spirit? How to prove it? Yes, it means Holy Spirit, but I don't know how to prove it. Internet, many people write cloud means Holy Spirit, but they cannot prove. They don't show verses clearly, cloud means Holy Spirit. They don't connect the thoughts. You know, the thoughts don't connect. There are many things that people say, actually, they cannot prove it. And because of that, there are many error teaching also because there are many times they quote something that is not proven also. Over my years, since as a young Christian, I heard many messages. I came to know a lot of them is not sound. It's not proven correctly. They just quote verses. Sometimes they even quote wrongly. Not long ago, my daughter attend some Christian fellowship group actually from her school from her school actually it's in her school so what happened is that in the Christian fellowship they try to prove that Jesus has power over death but they used the wrong example someone that did not die they say that Jesus has power over death the person did not die in that passage the person did not die and they used that passage. My daughter was like stretching her head. That was not the correct example to support that message. Yes, she believes she knows that Jesus has power over death. To bring someone from dead to life. But that person did not die. You know, so many times in the past, people use this and sometimes even wrong teaching come out of it. So it's very important to be able to prove it. And I like people, actually I like people prove it. I like people, as they say, they share with me something. I like them prove it clearly from the Bible, actually. Of course, casual talking, we, we understand. You don't have to go and quote verses, study verses. That will be too tiring for you. Me too. If I just casually share it, I may not quote verses here and there also. <clears throat> so I want to share with you cloud. You see, 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you, for ye, are the temple of the living God. 